the whole theory of the Missouri Safe Schools Act is to provide a, a safe environment for students because a safe environment is an environment that's easier to learn within. We certainly around the nation have had enough incidences of, of school violence that we want to avoid. The advantage of a school district not having its own police department, but having an, an officer or a deputy supplied by a municipality or a county sheriff's office is all of the administrative issues in, in, in entailing maintaining a licensed police officer, all of the report functions, submitting uh, process to the uh, prosecuting attorney, all of that is taken care of. It's a side issue. They don't have to increase their administrative capacity. Plus, the law enforcement officer is also supervised by law enforcement. And then, then if you get into a Safe Schools Act quandary of whether or not uh, an event is mandated reported or not is not left in the hands of the school administrator but in law enforcement. The options are do nothing, uh, which we think is the, the least appropriate. Uh, the next one is to is have embedded law enforcement within the building. We think that is the, the, the premier position to be in. Some schools have also had security that's separate from law enforcement. For instance, if they did metal detectors in an urban area, they would have, they would have private security run the metal detectors, but, the, but a school resource officer is a very unique position. It's, it's really a three-fold position that that person is the law enforcement presence. They're, they're also a mentor to students. They're also spending time in the classroom providing specialized education, not, a, not in lieu of a certified teacher, but filling in a class. For instance, when I was doing the school resource officer job, I would deal with search and seizure issues. We would deal with when, when self-defense becomes assault. I, I had about 35 topics I could, at the drop of a hat, fill in in the classroom. Conflict of interest is a big deal if they work for the district. It certainly can be. It's always a local control issue. My theory is, is that as a law enforcement executive, I'm mandated to deal with all of my citizens, which, which, which includes every kindergartner through high schooler in the district. And since they're uh, perhaps our greatest treasure, then we should provide the greatest safety for them. The best way for me to do that is to partner with people like Dr. Jones and have that embedded law enforcement officer. I think there's, there's perspective. If, if law enforcement will not step up to the plate, it allows the school district to still have an option. But I think the best situation is a living, breathing partnership between law enforcement and education. Let's just say that a, a building principal uh, had a fight occur in the building. And what really happened is one individual was being assaultive to the other person. And the other person, after doing everything possible to avoid, was trapped and, and defended themselves just enough to stop the event. And the, the, the school official might go, well, I'll tell you what, in this case, we want them both arrested for assault. The school resource officer in that case could go, no, discipline your venue and you can discipline however your policies require, but from a law enforcement perspective, a person has a clear right of self-defense. So one person who was assaultive in, in nature gets arrested and transported, and the other person merely acted on their constitutional rights. And a law enforcement officer is trained in knowing the difference. Uh, that's correct. And criminal law and school policy do not always line up exactly.